This is probably the most fun 22 rifle I have ever used and it's one that I've wanted for a very long time. No, it's nothing tactical, no black rifle, no AR or sort of Gucci semi-auto. It is and let's just say it right now, it's quite a bit older than me. The FN Browning Trombone. 22 pump action rifle isn't that cool these things are so cool and they are so much fun i've just wanted to do a video on this this is my own um i've hunted one down finally and uh, got this little beauty um and oh my god guys it is just so much fun so much fun Right, let me tell you a little bit about the history and the specs and uh, then I'll show it you in detail. But oh, I'm in love with this thing. I'm absolutely in love with it. So it is the FN Browning trombone. It was basically designed in 1919, believe it or not, by John Browning. And then it was made by Fabric Nationale or however you say it, I'm not saying it with an accent, Fabrique Nationale de Herstel, I don't know how you say it, whatever. FN, <laughs> it was produced by them between 1922 and 1974. There's about 150,000 of them made altogether. Uh, loads in the UK, I think there's quite a few in the US as well. I think they're quite rare in the US to be fair, they're quite sought after. Um, and that's basically it. This one, uh, we've managed to sort of date back to 1961, something like that. Uh, that's what we've sort of got it sort of down to, with, what with the serial number and everything, and the slight variant in, in like the, um, well, in the dovetail grooves, that's how you basically tell a, a later design. But I'll talk more about that in a minute. But yeah, 1961 this one uh, was made, so it's quite a bit older than me. <coughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, believe it or not, yeah. Um, and basically, it's a 2-2 rimfire pump-action rifle, tubular magazine. Um, it'll hold 11 uh, 2-2 lot LR in, in the uh, magazine, but it will run... 2-2 two, two short and 2-2 two, two long, so obviously if you've got 2-2 two, two short in there you'll get a few more. Um, these were basically in the 60s in the UK, you'd f almost certainly find one of these at a fairground, um, at a little shooting gallery, obviously chained chained up or whatever, but you'd find it at a shooting gallery, um, you know, and maybe you sort of uh, <coughs> older viewers may remember them, a bit before my time, but anyway, we won't even go there. Um, so yeah, it's basically, in the 60s, it was more popular as a fairground gun, it was at, at fairground, so that's where, you know, a lot of uh, you older viewers may have uh, seen one, but isn't it just a cool, cool little rifle? It's so cool, and it is little. Overall length is 39 and a quarter inches, or 1,000 millimetres, one, one metre, basically. Barrel length is 20 inches, or 510 millimetres. So it's a pretty short little thing, lightweight as well, weighing in at 4.4 pound or bang on two kilos. So really, really sort of lightweight, but oh, it's just so cool, so cool. Now, notice this one has got, uh, I just sort of touched on it earlier, uh, dovetail grooves for mounting the scope. By that alone, you can tell that this was made in the 60s because pre-60s ones um, didn't have the dovetail groove, so we kind of dated it to the 60s like that and then through the uh, the uh, serial number, we sort of got it down to uh, 1961. Um, but if you're after one of these, and I dare say you might be after watching this, um, seriously, seriously, if you see one, just get it seriously just get it because they, they they are just so much fun and they're so sort of quirky as well and the quality of it 
I mean, you watch the channel if you subscribe to the channel, uh, which you should be, by the way. Um, I've used a lot of rim fires, you know, I've, I've put a lot of rim fires on, you know, in video on this channel. And I've got to say, quality wise, this thing is just absolutely superb quality. It really is. I mean, to make something like this these days with this quality, it, it'd probably cost them too much. You know, um, that's why sort of stuff's obviously sort of mass produced these days and whatnot. But this thing is still rock solid. You know, I, I, I assume it's as good as the day it was built. All right, yeah, it's got its, you know, dinks and donks on it. But um, but for a, a gun that's, uh, for a rifle that's nearly 60 years old, you know, it's pretty, pretty damn amazing. Now, pre uh, 1960s ones were prone. Uh, I'm sort of, it's quite funny. I'm going, I'm on about quality and now I'm, I'm going to sort of uh, go off on a bit of a, um, bit of a fault they had. But there was the pre 60s ones. Um, you used to have, uh, you'd find basically pre 60s ones without the dovetail grooves. They were prone to cracking. Uh, around the stock. Now, my research tells me it was due to the um, the, rece <coughs> the receiver, um, the way it was made, but apparently the later ones, the 60s ones, seem to have got over it, but always look out for that. I mean, if you, if you happen to find one and it's a pre-60s one without the dovetail grooves, have a good look at the stock because they're prone to cracking, but if you I'd suggest go for one, unless you want an old one, of course. Go for one with the dovetail um, grooves. They seem to have got around that. But all of them are a little bit prone to cracking on the pump fore end. You can't tell, sort of, without look, you, you can't tell looking at it sort of like this. It's only if you strip it down. Um, I think they are quite prone to cracking. It's because it, they, were, they were made sort of quite sort of thin. But uh, but hopefully this one hasn't. I haven't sort of stripped it right down. I've, I've basically sort of field stripped, uh, and I'll touch on that in a minute because uh, it's a takedown rifle as well. So uh, just so cool, so cool. Right then, let's talk about accuracy. And I've got to tell you this now. I've got to uh, just dig out my uh, targets. Bear with me one second. Now basically, I set a target up at. I think it was 50 yards, just a target board, and I was shooting this thing off shooting sticks, so it was a bit of a breeze, open sights, and this is what happens, six shot groups, okay, there's the first one, yep, a little bit to the left, so I took my six shots, bear in mind the front post was virtually covering the entire target. So there's six shots, well you can only see five, I think the uh, the sixth one sort of went off slightly. But that's 50 yards, six shot groups, so sort of, you know, that sort, that sort of size. So anyway, I went and had a look at the target and I thought, okay, um, we'll make a slight adjustment. And then, that's what happened, okay, if you can see that. So tightened up a little bit. Yeah, I'm a little bit high. Like I said, open sights, shooting uh, off shooting sticks. I haven't took this thing to a proper range yet, you know, to sort of really see what it'll do. But obviously, that them groups will really tighten up. And that was with SNK standard ammo, so subsonic ammo. So not bad for a rifle that's nearly 60 years old. And I didn't even touch the sights or nothing. I've just shot this thing off sticks. Pretty damn impressive, even if I do say so myself. Oops, staples just fell out of the target. So I was pretty happy with that. Sort of got my got my eye in with it and then just started uh, clanging steel, uh, as you can see. And oh, just so much fun, so much fun. What, a, just a, a little, it's just such a quirky, little rifle it's i don't know it's almost what's the word there's something sort of romantic about it i don't know what it is it's just i don't know i think guys guys that own these will probably know what i'm on about um there's just something so cool about these rifles you know uh, this for me is a is an absolute keeper 
Um, I mean, I've dis I've thought about shall I sort of get it re you know tickled and get it reblued and get the stock done. But like loads of people are like, no, 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 don't touch it, leave it as it is. So mm, yeah, I think I'll leave it as it is, you know. But um, but what a what a cool cool little rifle. But anyway, let's take a closer look now. Obviously, it's a pump action. Um, doesn't it remind you of a miniature? Uh, Mossberg 500 shotgun it does to me I don't know it's just got that look of Mossberg about it so but and so that I think that's kind of what appeals a little bit <laughs> so I don't know I'm a Mossberg fan by the way so let's have a closer look at the stock then now uh, pretty basic as you can see and yeah it's ambidextrous uh, you've got a metal uh, sort of butt stock there uh, Butt pad. Well, it's not really a pad, is it? If it's metal, um, it is what it is. And obviously, you can see that uh, you know this stock has uh, had a few little dinks. It's in pretty good nick, to be honest. You know, like I said, a gun that is nearly 60 years old. It's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Um, real nice sort of pistol grip on it. It's just. Elegant, I don't know, it's just it's just cool, it's just cool, I'm just knocking my, my lights over. And then the other bit of the wood on the fore end, the actual uh, pump, it's it's almost it reminds me of a Mossberg um cob uh fore end. Uh, corn on the cob fore end, that's what they call them on the Mossbergs. Pretty much exactly the same as that. Um like I said, susceptible when I can say it to cracking in places. Uh, just keep an eye out for that. Uh, I've not stripped this down. Um, to be honest, whether I will sort of strip it down to every last nut and bolt, I don't know. Maybe I'll, one day I will, just to give it a real sort of deep clean. And then, let's talk about the action. So, obviously, it's pump action. Now, what's interesting about this rifle is, now, first of all, it's tubular magazine, okay? So, basically, to load it, you've got this little sort of knurled um, end here, you basically press this and it sort of, I can sort of show you on camera, as you press it, that bit goes in like that. So as you press it, you basically just pull, pull this and there's your sort of magazine follower, uh, if that's what you call it, your tubular magazine follower. That's what I'm calling it anyway. Like a spring-loaded affair here that basically sort of lines up all your your rounds. You can take that out and just drop them in at uh, the end or obviously just insert your rounds through that slot. Once you've got them all in, you basically just push this and it sort of stacks them all up and lines them all up properly. And obviously it's under spring tension, so that's what pushes them basically into the uh, into the chamber so to speak or into the loading mechanism of the rifle and the internals so yeah once you've done that sort of just close that up and if you get it the right way around so it sort of locks in place like so and I mean even that feels the quality of that feels good I mean I've used um, what was it uh, I've done a review on a Chiapa uh, lever action and you know, a brand new rifle, and it does not feel half as good as this thing when you load it. I'm just going to say that. This thing is just super smooth and slick. Maybe it's just the use that it's had, I don't know. And then basically once you've loaded it up like that, it's literally pump. Now, obviously it's clear, let me just pull the trigger there. Notice when I pump it, the entire magazine goes with it as well. Okay, so uh, it's quite a, quite an unusual um, little rifle. So the magazine is sort of fixed to the actual fore end pump. So that's pretty cool. That, by the way, is like your um, fore end release. So you basically just press press this little lever here, so you can sort of uh, pump it load it, pull the fore end back, whatever you want to sort of call it. Uh, that's basically decocker, I suppose you could call that your decocker. 
And that's, that's basically it. Now, while we've got that open, I'll just sort of show you in there. It might be a little bit dirty, guys. I have cleaned it, but it does need a bit of a scrub out. That is sort of your guts in there. And I've got to say, guys, this thing did not miss a beat. It was just round after round after round. I mean, I was having so much fun with this thing, you know. I thought I'd only sort of use, you know, probably 50 or 60 rounds at most. I think I chewed through like 200, 250 rounds, you know, and that's a lot when you loaded them individually by hand. But this thing, it was just making me smile big time, big time. And like I said, it is so sort of slick, the action is. It's just, it just feels super, super slick, you know. It, it's just really, really nice, silky smooth action on it. And when you fire it, um, obviously it'll just bring a big, big smile to your face. But when you, um, once you have fired it and you, you obviously cycle the action, I've got to say for a gun that is this old, it ejects these. It ejects the spent brass um, quite far actually. Uh, I was quite impressed with it, you know. And I've got to just sort of let you into a bit of a, bit of a, well, not a secret, but I've just got to point this thing out, which will really sort of add to the quirkiness of this uh, rifle. It will slam fire, okay? Those of you who don't know what slam fire means, basically, and you will lose accuracy, by the way, guys, keep your finger on the trigger and then just pump. And that's firing. So you can basically fire this thing as fast as you can cycle the action on it. So that's slam fire. So this thing will slam fire, which is pretty cool, you know. Uh, I did try it, I, I'll put some footage in. It, you totally lose accuracy, but um, you gain sort of fun factor, I guess. But like I said, the action, silky smooth, ejection for, for a rifle that is this old, it's just awesome. It just throws the uh, spent cases. Um, that brings me on to the trigger. And do you know what? I wasn't going to do it, but why not? I'm going to measure the trigger on this rifle that is nearly 60 years old. Uh, I've not prepared it all, so bear with me while I just get my uh, trigger gauge out and uh, put it all together. Um, no, I've, why not? I don't even know what it's pulling, pulling at, so let's uh, let's just see out of interest. Uh, it'll just be a bit of fun, really, you know. I usually pull triggers in reviews. Is that ever cop that? So that's cop. Just double check. Don't know what this thing is pulling, um, but... The trigger just felt felt really good, so let's give it a pull. Just for a laugh more than anything. Okay, so six pounds, four ounces. That's not bad, that's not bad. I mean, you know, what do you want? Non-adjustable trigger, uh, obviously on a little little rifle like this. Cross bolt safety, which um Let's just cock it, which is my favourite, and that still feels so good. You know, oh, just love it. I just love it. You guys, you'll be able to tell that I'm actually in love with this rifle, because I truly am. Um, my boy is going to inherit this thing, I'll tell you. I've already told him he's only like four years old. And I'm, I'm like, dude, this rifle is yours when you're old enough. But uh, anyway, so that's basically it. Let's just fire that off. Your sights, um, there's your uh, rear sight. As you can see, it's like a spring-loaded affair. I didn't touch these things, you know. Um, I didn't touch the sights when I was shooting it. And once I got my eye in with it, um, I was just clanging the steel. And every time I hit it, it was making me smile. And do you know what? Even if I didn't hit the target, this thing was still making me smile. There's your front post as well. And look at the thickness of that barrel. You know, this this rifle is like, what, 56 years old? Look at the thickness of that barrel. And I've looked down the bore as well, and the rifling looks, it looks good. I mean, God knows how many rounds this rifle's put through. You know, how many it's, it's put through. Um, 
or it's had put through. It's, you know, quite quite interesting. You know, where I wonder where this rifle has been. You know, has it been? Has it actually been on a fair ground? Has it just been used for plinking, target practice, hunting? Maybe. You know, um, it could tell a few stories. I'm sure. Now then, this is the good bit as well. Field strip. This little uh, screw. Um, or, and it's slightly knurled as well, so um, you could either do it with like a, a penny or uh, just sort of undo it. Basically, undo this like so, and the rifle will just come apart, and I can sort of show you the uh, the guts. So let's just take that bit off. Try not to get oil all over my uh, rack and load yellow yeah, that's on the table. There's the guts, look, um, will we be able to, you won't be able to see the bore because the action's in the way, obviously, I don't know why I'm doing that, but there's the guts, anyway, uh, I've, I have gave this a good clean out and uh, a good oiling um, when I first got it, so, so there's basically your guts, and then here's your, your trigger mac here, I mean, you can see the wear that this thing's had, and it's just so silky. Oh, just what a what a cool rifle, guys! What a cool. You're gonna get fed up of me saying that, but I just can't. I can't stress it enough. Put it back together. It's basically uh, me failing as usual on camera. Basically, just sort of slide it back together. He says, "I hate doing this on camera. It's just I just fail every time." Right, let's get this right, that's better. Basically, plunk it back together like I just did. I think that was blind luck more than anything. Do the screw up. And basically that's it, you're, you're back together. Rifle's back together. Yeah, let's just do it. There you go. Just, just cool, just cool, but Guys, I just wanted to throw a, a little video about this, you know, um, a review, an overview, just a general sort of look at such a cool, cool little 22 rifle. All I'm going to say is, guys, apart from, and you already know that I'm in love with this thing, the FN Browning Trombone. If you see one of these, get one. Just get one because they are pretty cheap, you know, they're not fetching sort of mega bucks, you know, and the chances are you go down to your sort of local gun dealer, he's probably got one sort of gathering dust in the back somewhere. Just ask and just have a look and a feel of one of these things and you'll be like, this is so cool, this is so cool. But seriously guys, if you see one, get one, just get one, because it will be some serious fun had when you take this thing down the range. Anyway guys, that is it. Just a quirky little video for a quirky little rifle. The FN Browning Trombone. I love it, love it, love it, love it. What a superb little plinking rifle. Maybe even Hunter, especially on the uh, 60s uh, version. You throw a scope on there. Yeah, very good little hunting rifle, I'd say. But that is it, guys. That is your rack and load review of the, well, rack and load review stroke overview. Stroke, a bit of romance with a rifle video. Um, that is the FN Browning Trombone. That's rack and load. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.